I'm Ben. I'm sorry. If you would like to get your song reviewed, dear listener, there's the filthy capitalist option. And sorry says. 125 gets you straight to the head of the line. You don't have to be a part of the alliance. You don't have to be part of the group. Wait a minute. And the biggest thing is you don't have to wait. You hop, skip, and jump right in front of everybody. 125 gets you there. You do that three times, and you get mashed down to the $75 rate for perpetuity. Yes! Also, there is a band review option. <laughs> so if you've got a band and you're trying to get your band some exposure, hit me up at sorry at gmail.com, and I'll show you the details about how to pull you that off. You can also jump on Patreon, and there is a option on the tiers to be able to get your band reviewed. Yep. Obviously, we can't lie to you. So we can't guarantee, can't guarantee a positive you review. A positive review. <laughs> get what you get. It's just rubbish. 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 That's British for garbage. Ah! My favorite is the community option. One dollar at the gate gets you in a Patreon. You get to join an alliance. The alliance joins their points together, and that helps determine what songs that we do. <laughs> the alliances hang out on Discord. Shh. Message me on Patreon to get the link. And they do all kinds of other cool things. They do Minecraft. What? Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, yeah. It's really a community within the community. Anybody can go on the village, facebook.com backslash Finn and Sorry. There's 160 plus thousand people on the channel. What's cool about the Discord is that it offers a real opportunity for community connection, friendship, that type of thing. But, and it's on Discord, so if you're not a Facebook person, it's for you. You start off at a dollar. Right. Plus you get exclusives. Sorry and I are working on a song. So the first 15 seconds of that was on Patreon. Also, at $15 here and above, when we actually debut the video, they're going to be there live with us. There you are, dear listener. Buy our merch. Buy our merch indeed. A child shall lead them. To buy our merch. Look, I believe somebody left gifts for you. Yes, dear listener. Yes, Go. dear listener. Yes, dear listener. All right, you guys. A stream ahead of... Uh, <laughs> Elephantine proportions. This is the biggest stream we've ever done before, you guys. Uh, so say elephantine proportions. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't think of anything else. It was so like corny and white, but that's all right. Anyway, so that's where we are, and this is where we are. Okay, we're gonna start this stream. This stream is for the big homie Seven Dusted. It so it's a ten-song stream. Prepare yourselves. Soul Asylum is the name of the band. Ninety-nine percent, I think, is the name of the song. Let's do it. Soul Asylum. Is that a lyric video?
Okay, so I, I see that you and Seven have been so talking a lot. Asylum. <laughs> okay, that song I think is super relatable for like everybody. Because that's not just, I mean, obviously that's like r romantic relationships, but like, well, I, the I don't own you means, you know, it's, it's definitively about relationships, but I do think that this one could cross a lot of different platforms of people that you, but anyway, I do understand it's a relationship song. Okay. I don't own you, but I know you're mine. Never disown you. Never treat you unkind. Once in a while you get on my nerves. Um, once in a while you get what you deserve. I want you 99% of the time. I asked we okay, so this part, this this is super relatable. So once I know I've I've successfully pissed you off. And by successfully, I don't mean that I intentionally tried to do so, but I know that it's definitely happened now. Cause sometimes there'll be like a bit of question. So this is like before so so this is I'll do this. If I, I think to myself, so I'll ask you, I'll be like, what are you thinking about? And when I'm asking that question, a lot of the times I'm trying to find out if you're like thinking of something like you're mad at me or frustrated with me. Because <laughs> we just had that whatever. So um, so I understood that part I thought was really relatable. Um, but also the fact that he's like, I think it's very real because he's like expressing, you know, like frustration or whatever. But at the same time, he's like, let's move in together happily ever after. Yeah. He tells her she's so fucking fine. And it's just like, okay, <laughs> but it's real. It's a relationship. So. I mean, you, you, the, the, the thing about relationships is that, especially when they're intense personalities is people always do the always never thing. So it's like, you always do this, you always do that. So depending on like how petty you feel in the moment, because you can either... Jump it, on that it, or not. Right, in that moment you can decide yeah. to be a moron and say, great, now I'm going to find the one time that didn't happen and then completely invalidate. So like the 99% thing was funny to me because it's mm -hmm. like, how precise do you have to be when you're communicating the stuff that bothers you in a relationship? You see what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like... It's like, oh, I don't, I, this annoys me or that annoys me. But it's like, how many times does this, does this happen? And so the 99% thing was just funny to me because cause the whole always and never thing. Yeah. So it's like, this is like, well, you do it all the time. Like 99% of the time. It's just, it's just funny. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. It's, I, and he said like, I, I think, I think it's really like honest because he's, I think that there are times where people get to points where they're like, wow, I'm fucking over this. But it's like, okay, that's like the one. You know what I mean? Like, 100%. And it's the one, it is, but it happens. <laughs> you, you're two people living together. You're dealing with each other. Like people are going to get short and frustrated and stuff's going to, you know, and the pressure's around and whatever. But at the end of it, like. Wait, once in a while you get in my way. <laughs> I missed that part. Once in a while, you know, I got to say, I love you. Okay, so. I, okay, I appreciate that because um, one of the things that you have, like, desperately tried to bring me into, and I'm, I'm slowly clawing my way there, is to be authentic in a relationship on the, even if you're frustrated side, and that's where I'm not good at it. Like, if, if he does something that bugs me, I won't say it, I won't say it, I won't say it. And then all of a sudden I hit a breaking point and then I'm like, wow, you're always doing this. And he's like, you never even brought this up. So like, that's, <laughs> that's valid. You shouldn't do that in relationships. But I, so I guess for me, this song is cool because it, it normalizes, I guess the feeling of like, it's not happily. He just said after he got done saying that, let's move in together happily ever after. When he's yeah. been saying the whole time that there are also problems. So I think that I kind of like the, because I like the idea of happily ever after. And maybe it's perception and, and how much meaning you pour into things. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, it, yeah. Just, what? Vin's good at that. I am horrible at it. I'm getting a little better, but I'm still really bad at communicating. Especially when it's... Um, when I'm not like at that breaking point, then I don't do well communicating. I don't like what you're doing. I, I have to get to that point before I can speak my mind about it, which is unhealthy. It's not good for relationships. We, we had a, 
We had a hot mic moment like a year ago. <laughs> Me and her were disagreeing about something. It was funny because... Oh, my gosh. Uh, <laughs> you know, Amy Lee Forever was like, oh, that was a very constructive... It was a very constructive argument, she Yeah, said. I was so glad that she said that because I was like, really? The, the, the live stream was still going and there was still a bunch of people in the stream. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, I just think that it's one of those things where it's like... It doesn't matter how how long the couples have been together if you're together for any significant amount of time you're going to disagree so you got to find ways to to disagree without without it turning into like you wanting to win a whatever which that's, is obviously very difficult you know that's the thing yeah and i think that that's where i'm trying to like grow is because in my previous relationship i we didn't discuss problems like they were discussed a little bit, and when it was clear and evident that nothing was going to be done about that, and it got a little toxic, <laughs> then I just kind of got quiet on the issues. But in this relationship, like, there, I'm, like, I have the opportunity to be able to talk stuff through and actually be heard out and stuff like that. So yeah. I'm trying to, like, get myself to the point of realizing that we're... We're on a team, even when we disagree, we can still work together. And, and one thing that I think is, is helpful is I'm saying all right, well, what is, what are his feelings on this subject? Because a lot of times I'm just thinking about what his thoughts are on the subject. Um, because he, com you communicate your thoughts more than you communicate your feelings on a subject. So a lot of times I think what your thoughts are. And so having like looking at it yeah. from the, the feelings angle changes things for me because, you know, sometimes somebody's angry, but they're angry because they're actually hurt. So if you can actually see like, okay, what's the feelings behind this? Then you can realize, oh shoot, actually he's hurt right now. He's not really as, he's, he's mad, but he's mad because he skipped past hurt. So let's deal with that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, part of that is knowing another person too and, and knowing that what they do when they're hurt or what they do when they're having a hard time or whatever. But that's like the... That's that's like what's so realistic about the song, is that there's obviously things are not perfect in the relationship. Yeah. But, the, but some of it is also perspective. Like you can you can look at the bad things that your your other half does or whatever, and you can be like, oh, they do this bad thing ninety nine percent of the time. And it's like really, it's only like fifty percent of the time. Mm -hmm. And if you would look at it as like happening only twenty percent of the time, then you would you would experience it a lot different. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the things that we experience in relationships have to do with like w what story gets told around exactly the, the action. Mm -hmm. Like the some of it has to do with like your history too. Like right. if you saw certain things in in someone else's relationship, maybe your parents and your mother got really frustrated with a certain thing, and then all of a sudden you you do the thing that frustrated her, and then mm -hmm. it's like yeah, that's not right. You know what I mean? But like wait a minute. And Ian, to answer your question. The example of conveying your thoughts versus your feelings is he's saying, hey, I don't like this or that thing. Instead of saying, when you did this, it hurt me. So like when he, I feel like maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like anytime that you've expressed like that, like hurt emotion, like when you say that, like, I feel like I, I immediately realize, whoa, we're in a different place than I thought. We're not like on a mad front battling. Like we're actually, we're actually in a hospital here. I'm sorry. Like, I, I don't like that. You know, when that happens. Mm -hmm. So um yeah yeah and, you know and then there's other people it's like they may not communicate their issues because they think it's like trivial it's not important enough mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying like especially depending on you know the profession that your 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 spouse is engaged with you might think to yourself oh like they're coming from doing some crazy thing in the world you know what i'm saying like my little thing is not that big and then but then it, what happens when you when you operate that way, then it accumulates. And then when you get really angry, that's when it do you do comes that? up. Um, no, I, I don't do that. Oh, but I know people, I do that. I'll be like, man, this is going to look so... Like, you've talked about it before. You're like the girl with the broken fingernail. Right. I mean... Yeah, yeah, right. So it could it could make a person... Make the, the girl with the broken fingernail feel like, yo, this is not really something to complain about. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like but it's, it's, it's more it stuff than fingernails, but yeah. Yeah, it goes, ba-boom. 
Yeah, you, you're probably right. Because I'll be like, ah, this is not something to, eh, this is not, eh, I won't say anything, but yeah, and then all of a sudden it, it gets too big. But I think sometimes things are about being really like aware of patterns and not just your own patterns, but like all of humanity. So, you know, like most people, when they hit about our age, they go through like a midlife crisis where right. they feel like I got to revamp this. I got to fucking do something else. And, but realizing that and saying, okay, if all of a sudden you start feeling whatever, and then you say, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm at that age where, <laughs> where, where everybody else freaking buys a sports car and jumps into another relationship. They're doing all these craziness. Right. Like right. let's hold down the fort. You know what I mean? Like, right. And also recognizing your own patterns and realizing what things like you can't deal with in a relationship anymore and what things that you're like, okay, that's annoying. But, but I do think that one thing that, that I have also made a mistake on in, in the relationship would be, I'll do the compromise within myself and never talk to him about it. So I feel like, holy shit, I'm compromising all over the place. And, oh, he's, and you're saying, yeah. what, we, what, are you, what are you compromising on? I'm like, every decision that I make, yeah. I always make a compromise before I do something. Yeah. So any, like, literally almost every situation, I'll make some sort of a, a compromise before I do it, I guess, so I can feel like I'm not just being like a taking person or something like that. Like, so I always want to make sure it's like, okay, let's kind of. Um, well, you've always been like collaborative you know, in our relationship. You very rarely want things to go your way at the expense of me. You generally want things to be, you know, benefit both of us. So mm -hmm. then when we have discussions about it, you know, it comes out that way for sure. That's how it looks to me. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't seen Michelle in the house yet, but I'm sure she will be showing up very soon. Anyway, so this song, like sound wise, mm, was not like a giant fan of it. I did think it was funny though at the end, the way that he was singing it. Definitely sounded like a 90s song though, that's for sure. I liked the way he was singing it at the end because it kind of had like that like, ah, I'm, I'm sort of losing my shit here, you know, feeling to it. Which, um, <laughs> but, but at the end of the song was when it was it was like coming together that they're gonna live happily ever after. He, re he thinks she's fine, you know, like he doesn't wanna waste any more time. Um, but no, he said, let's stay like this and waste some more time. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Stay like what? Well, it, 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 there's kind of a youthfulness about the relationship. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yes. So it, it, it's, it's kind of like you, you, you kind of want to be immature for the rest of your life and not really totally grow up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I yeah, I think there is some of that to it. Yeah. And a relationship could do that to you when it's good. You know what I'm saying? You feel a little bit younger. I don't know. Yeah. That's I'm so like interesting. Me, dear listener. <laughs> All right, you guys. So this song, I'm going to go with an 8.6. No, 8 point. I, I said 8.6. I'm going to stay with that. Yeah, I had it, I had it as an 8.5. 8.5. Solid opening. The night has just begun. We are in an ultra mega stream, dear listener. A dead song yes. night. Yes. Dustin has been reading all mail. He's been reading all mail. <laughs> all right, we'll be right back, you guys, with the song <laughs> the Southern said, Pride. Uh, we approved your pardon. <laughs> but we approved your pardon. <laughs> but, uh, all right, we'll Release be back. Release me, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Release me, sir. <laughs> all right, we'll let you know what we're talking about. It is on the break. Let's go.